<clears throat> Hello everyone, welcome back for ACT Math uh, prep. We're prepping for the ACT exam. Today we're going to talk about plane geometry. So we're going to talk about angles and formulas and all that good stuff that goes into plane geometry. Um, hopefully, what, like I've said before, hopefully a lot of this is review for you guys and you've learned a lot of these concepts in your math classes over the past few years. So, um, without further ado, we're going to get started right away, um, and we're going to talk about angles for a second. So, here we go. Um, angles and the relationships between parallel and perpendicular lines. So, as you can see, we have a vertical corresponding alternate. Interior and exterior angles are congruent. So congruent means equal. Angles are equal to each other. And as you can see from my PowerPoint here, we have two parallel lines. And we have one line that's being jetted through them. Um, some of our math problems on our uh, practice exam that I've given you are similar, similar to this. Um, and we are asked to find which angles are the same and which ones are different. As you can see here, 2 and 3, 2 and 3 have the same angle, and 1 and 4, 1 and 4 have the same angle. So they're correspond, or they're alternate x, mm. here we are on the interior, and we have alternate angles corresponding, 2 or 3, they're congruent, and 1 and 4 are congruent. Similarly down here, we have 6 and 7, 6 and 7 are con congruent angles, and they are equal to each other, same as 5 and 8, 5 and 8. You can also see linear and same side interior x angles are supplementary. So what that means, ah, sorry, over here, is angles 2 and 4, 2 and 4 are going to add up to 180 degrees. That's what the definition of supplementary angles are. The sum of these angles is 180 degrees. So you can imagine a straight line is 180 degrees, and when you cut a line right through there, right through the middle like this, the angle that is of 2 and the angle that is of 4 is going to equal 180 degrees. Uh, simil similarly, we have complementary angles, and complementary angles add up to 90 degrees. Um, so you might experience that on the ACT. Uh, you might see the words complementary or supplementary. You know, supplementary is 180 degrees, complementary is 90 degrees. Um, if we and we're going to do a practice problem here from our, uh, from our practice test. Get a little bit more organized, I suppose. Um, but I'm going to switch to the other camera here, so um, I'm going to work one of our practice problems from our, uh, from our practice test. So camera two. Now, there's quite a few. Quite a few problems from our practice exam that uh, that that deal with this. Um, we're going to start with uh, number thirteen here. Number thirteen. Zoom in. I highlighted it so we can see it a little better. But here we are. Practice problem number thirteen. In the figure below, C is the intersection of the line AD and BE. If it can be determined, what is the measure of angle BAC? So, if it can be determined, which it can be, um, and I will show you exactly how it's done. Um, so let me draw our, our image here. Our line, we have B right there. Right there, and we had another line with C, D, and A. Lock those together. <clears throat> we know that uh, this is 45 degrees, we know that this is 35 degrees. Um, now, this, this problem jumps into uh, two concepts that we need to know, but the important one that we need to know is recognizing the fact that 
this angle right here, the 45 that you see, is the same as this angle that you see right here, uh, since they are um, alternate angles from each other. So this is 45, that means this has to be 45 degrees as well, because they're, they're uh, opposite of each other. As you see here, there's one here, and so this is the same angle, assuming this is a straight line, right? But um, if this is straight, then we know that this is 45 degrees, then we can assume that this is 45 degrees as well. So if we want to solve this problem, we're looking for this angle, this angle right here. We'll call it theta. Um, there's my theta. This is the angle that we're interested in finding. So another cat, another thing that you should know or need to know um, is that the sum, the sum of the interior angles of a triangle equal 180 degrees. So if that be the case, that be the case, we can find this angle that they've asked us to find by simply taking 180 minus 45, because we know that that is the same as this, because they're alternate interior angles, minus 35. And when we do that math, we get 180 minus 45 minus 35 equals 100. 100 degrees. Uh, as you can see from our answer sheet here, 100 degrees is a choice of B. So, so 13 here is B, and I used the uh, fact that I knew that I knew what this angle was, even though it wasn't marked. I knew what this angle was because it's got to be the same as the as the opposite side of it as you see here so that's how I would work that problem <clears throat> a similar problem a similar problem would be problem number 20 Better yet, problem number 17 here is a little bit, uh, well, we'll go in order as best we can, but problem number 17 is uh, of the same, is of the same sort. In a plane, the distinct lines AB and CD intersect at A, where A is between C and D. The measure of angle BAC is 47 degrees. What is the measure of angle BAD? So let me draw you a, a picture of what this, of what this looks like. Um, out a little bit. So, in a plane, the distinct lines AB and CD intersect at A. So, here's my <clears throat> here's my A. Oops, sorry, it's not not okay. <clears throat> Sorry. Here's my line CD. And here's my intersection point at A of line AB. So there's line AB. And they <laughs> intersect at A. In the plane, the distinct lines AB and CD intersect at A. Here we are. Where A is between C and D. True. The measure of angle BAC, BAC, so this angle. This angle right here has to equal 47 degrees. So as you can tell, my uh, picture didn't uh, do enough justice. We can see in this, in this picture that this angle is much greater than 47 degrees, but uh, I'm marking it as 47 degrees. And uh, from the story problem, I've drawn a picture that, that fits everything into the story problem. A is the intersection of, or A is on the point CD, on the line CD, and it's the intersection of these two lines. So 
We assume that this is 47 degrees, um, and we are asked to find this angle, so we'll call this angle theta, or a question mark. And the important thing to know is that two, two angles on a straight line, the straight line, the straight line is equal to 180 degrees. So these are supplementary right here. From here to here, if you were to count your rotation, you would imagine you would be rotating 180 degrees. So if that be the case, then from here to here is also 180 degrees. This is also 180 degrees. This is 180 degrees. And we know that this is 47. So if we want to find theta, we simply have to take 180 degrees minus 47 degrees, and that will give us our, op our angle just on the other side. So 180 minus 40 is uh, 140, minus another 7 is going to give us 133. Um, if you look here, and our choices, uh, zoom in a little bit, um, you'll see that our best answer is D, 133. 133 degrees uh, is what angle B, A, B. All right, so that's a, a quick rundown on angles. Um, I have another problem here from our practice test that we'll also do. And like that. So we'll look at uh, number 20. Number 20 in our practice exam. Uh, number 20 is, oh, it's right there. There it is. So here we have a, a trapezoid. A trapezoid. A trapezoid ABCD shown below. AB. AB is parallel to BC. The measurements of the interior angles are distinct, and the measure of angle D is X. What is the degree measure of A in terms of X? So the degree of angle A. So let me draw our picture so it's a little bit bigger. This is x degrees. If I extend this line a little bit in both directions, I'm curious about angle A here. Angle A is what I'm after. <coughs> well, I know because of what I said from the from the PowerPoint presentation that um, this angle x x degrees right here is equal to, to this angle right here. Right here, this is x degrees as well. And we know from our last problem that a full line, a full line makes 180 degrees. So if I want to find angle A, well, I simply need to take 180 degrees and minus the x degrees, and this will give me, give me um, the rest of what is left over to complete my 180. So, um, I'm going to go with 180 degrees minus x degrees is equal to angle A. Um, as you can see here from uh, our answer choices in problem 20, that's uh, sure enough, 180 degrees minus x degrees um, is our answer. Answer F. F is the correct choice here. So. We need to know that this angle is the same as that angle, and we want the opposite of that. So we take 180, they're supplementary, so we take 180 and minus the x degrees, and we have what's left over for angle A. <clears throat> All right. Um, so. Angles are not too difficult. It takes some practice to get used to them, but it's a, really a visualization sort of a deal. Um, you're going to want to practice with them. We'll move back to camera one. So you're going to want to practice with them, um, play with them a little bit. 
<clears throat> There's lots of practice problems online for plane geometry and knowing your angles facts. Your facts about angles. Come on. Options. All right, so again, angles and the relationships between parallel and perpendicular lines. Lots of our shapes have parallel, perpendicular lines in them. Um, it's important to know the, how, how this guy works, this guy right here. So 1 and 4 are opposite corresponding angles, 3 and 2, same with 5 and 6, 7 and, or 5 and 8, sorry, 7 and 6. And then, of course, 1 and 5 is the same. 2 and 6 is the same, 4 and 8, 3 and 7. They are, op they are all corresponding to each other. So that's a little bit on parallel and perpendicular lines and the relations between their angles. The next thing we're going to need to know is uh, all the properties of circles. You're going to need to know lots of formulas for the ACT um, and lots of formulas all the formulas for our different shapes and be comfortable with our different shapes. We have some technical definitions, right, for uh, arc length here. Um, I have an arc length problem that I will do with you. Uh, here we have a, a sector of a circle, and then this line is called a line segment. Notice it does not go through the middle. I have written up here uh, radius versus diameter. Excuse me. Um, the radius starts at the very middle, okay, so it's going to be right here, right here at the very middle, and it's going to work its way out to the end, to the edge of the circle. So the radius starts in the middle and works its way out. The diameter is two times the radius. So the diameter is a, any line that goes straight through, all the way through the circle, but it has to go through the middle. If it goes through like this on the side, this is not a diameter, this is just a line segment. Um, I've heard this called something else before, can't come to my mind right now, but this is not a diameter, so this is, this is not helpful in most mathematical situations. What we're looking for is radiuses. Notice the, the formulas have R, R squared here for area, and R for circumference. Um, the radius is going to be the most useful thing for a circle, so we want to keep in mind the radius starts in the middle and works its way out. Let's talk about the word circumference really fast. Uh, circumference is a fancy way of saying perimeter for a circle. That's basically what the circumference is. Um, the circumference is the, the distance around the circle. Notice the units uh, for area, it's square units. So we, we're squaring something here. And notice for circumference, it's just, it's just a length, so it's 2 pi times the radius, and it's just going to be inches or feet or miles, whatever. The area up here is going to be inches squared, miles squared, square miles, square feet, so it has a different units for that. And then, of course, there's arc length. So this is a formula. It's a pretty difficult one to stick into memory for a while, but this is the, the central angle, and I'm actually going to work a problem here for you for arc length, but central angle um, is the angle, say, whatever perfect, whatever this sector angle was, so it looks like it's a 90 degree sector right here, um, but if you were to take that, divide it by 360, and then multiply by 2 pi r, you would have the length of the outside arc that you see here, this arc, this arc right here in green. If we knew what this angle was, we could calculate the length of this arc. And we're going to do that right now with a practice problem. <clears throat> um, so this practice problem that I found concerning arc length was not on our practice test. Um, I could not find any <coughs> arc length problems on, this, on the particular test that I gave you, but um, uh, it's definitely fair game and possible to see this on the 
on the exam. So here's an ACT question that you see. If a central angle of measure 30 degrees is subtended by a circular arc of length 6 meters, as illustrated below, how many meters in length is the radius of the circle? So here we have to find the radius. So let me draw our circle a little different. Uh, it's in green. There's our circle. And we know that from here to there is 30 degrees. And we know that this length right here is 6. So the formula was central angle divided by 360 times 2 pi r is equal to the arc length. I planked. So if that's the case, if I know this, and I know these two pieces of information, I can, I can solve for the radius. So how are we going to do that? We're going to say 6 is equal to, because it's the arc length, the central angle, 30 divided by 360, times 2 pi r. And I'm going to solve this problem. Uh, <clears throat> Simplifies down to 6 is equal to 1 over 12. Um, 2 pi r over 12. And because I multiply fractions, top to top, bottom to bottom, I, I know that the 2 pi r will be on top. Uh, 12 times 6 is, oh, I don't know. Solving this problem, 12 times 6 is 72. Seventy-two is equal to two pi r. Divide by two pi. Divide by two pi. Those cancel out. So r then r then is equal to seventy-two divided by two. Which is thirty-six, and it's still over pi. I didn't. Uh, I didn't want to deal with that. I took the 72 over 2 and got 36, but the pi is still on the bottom, as you can see here. So the radius, then, is equal to 36 over pi, whatever that number be. Uh, we could figure that number out, but it's more useful here because, as you can see um, from our problems, that D, D is the correct choice here, D, 36 over pi. So that's how you solve problems using an, the arc length formula. Um, now that I know the radius, I could find the area of this circle. I could also find the, the circumference. So let's do that real fast. Um, there's my radius. And it's equal to 36 over pi. So the area then, the area is equal to pi r squared. Uh, so we'll just hold on to pi, and we will take 36 over pi and we'll square it. And let's see, see what that gives us. divided by pi squared, this horrible number, uh, times another pi over the center. So 412.53. Zoom that out. Uh, so there was my circle. Sorry, there was my circle with my radius of 36 over pi. Here's my area for a circle. It's pi r squared. So I plugged in whatever my r was, 36 of it, and I squared it, as you can see there. And then I multiplied that by 3.14, or pi again, and I got 412. Um, 
you go. Multiply by pi again, 412.53 square units for the area of that circle. Uh, if I want the circumference, circumference is equal to 2 pi r. And in this case, I have r already. r is up there. I solve for it. So that's going to be 2 pi times 36 over pi. And I can simply type that into my calculator. Uh, 2 pi times 36 divided by pi. Seventy-two just units, not square units. We didn't take an area. We just found the distance around the circle, and it's seventy-two units if the radius is thirty-six over pi. So I took that problem way farther than we were asked to. It was asked us to just deal with arc length, but I thought I would take this opportunity to show you how to calculate the area of a circle using the formula, and also the circumference of a circle. Uh, it's important to know the difference between the area of the circle and the circumference. Circumference is distant around, area is distant area, amount of space inside that's being eaten up by the circle. Okay. Uh, if you guys have any questions, please email me at inspiredclassroomtim at gmail.com. I will be happy to respond. Um, and I'm fairly knowledgeable about most of these and comfortable with most of these concepts so please please feel free if you have questions to email me uh, sorry there we go and I'm back kinda perfect so properties of circles so we have three formulas we have the area we have the circumference and we have the arc length um, I wish there was a nice, easy way to remember these formulas, like like um, squares, which we're going to talk about rectangles here in a minute, but uh, um, it's really a game of practicing and getting used to, used to these sorts of ideas and getting used to working with these formulas and solving problems like this. So, practice makes perfect, uh, and if you have questions, feel free to ask. All right, properties of rectangles and parallelograms. So here we have a, a rectangle. Um, the properties of a rectangle are, are that uh, they have to have 90 degree angles. So four of them, 90 times four, it happens to be 360. So the, the interior angles all add up to 360. It's gotta have parallel sides, okay? So this rectangle um, obviously has parallel sides and this side is parallel to the other side. So this is definitely a rectangle. It's also a parallelogram. Parallelogram doesn't necessarily have to have the 90 degree angles, um, but it does have to have the parallel sides. A rectangle has to have 90 degree angles. And then of course the square. A square is a rectangle, but a rectangle is not necessarily a square. You may have heard that before. Um, the square is required to have the same the same side lengths for each side. So it has to have the parallel sides, it has to have the 90 degree angles, and they all have to be equal. The rectangle, the, the side lengths can differ, but it still needs to be parallel, it still needs to have the 90 degree angle. So here we'll, we'll uh, do a quick problem. Notice the formula. The formula for area is, is really simple, and it's the same for a parallelogram. So we're going to talk about the difference between rectangles and parallelograms here in a second, but um, the area is just the base times the height, and that's going to give you everything, everything in the in the square, right? The perimeter is going to be this distance plus this distance plus this distance plus this distance, or two lengths plus two widths. So we'll uh, we'll grab a, a square real fast or a rectangle real fast, and we'll do a little bit of practice on that. Huh? <clears throat> so here we are, and I'm just 
going to uh, make a square, or a rectangle, I'm sorry. Here's my rectangle. Uh, I'm not digging the green anymore. Just some red. I'll make this, uh, this side length, how about seven? And we'll make this side length, how about three? So if I want the area, area is equal to seven times three. One. And the perimeter, perimeter then is equal to um, two times the seven plus two times three. Two times seven is 14. Two times three is six. So this is going to equal 20. So the area is 21 units squared. And the perimeter is, once again, 20 units. Notice the, notice the different, the different um, uh, units that come on that this is square units this is just regular units so that's the area of a um, rectangle not difficult just multiplying the, the two side lengths together and that gives you all of this stuff in between in between all the space in between now let's take a quick look at that real fast for a parallelogram because the parallelogram can be a little trickier, not a lot trickier, but it's a, it's a little trickier. Just have to flip this over, I guess. Now let's look at a parallelogram. There's my parallelogram. And I can have this base. This base, we'll say this is 7 again. We'll say this is 3 again. Um, but... Uh, the area for a parallelogram is base times height. And this here, this 3 that you see, it's still base times height, but whenever you're talking about height, you always want the perpendicular height. So we want the height of this thing going straight up and down. Um, so let's pretend that this is going to be 2. It's going to be roughly 2. This side's going to be a little bit too long to, for our perpendicular side. So. Um, if this, we want to use our perpendicular height, this is called the slant height, and it's not useful in most cases. Sometimes it is, depending on what you're doing, but the slant height is not useful. We want the perpendicular, and that symbol right there, perpendicular height. That's what we want. So for area, then, area is equal to um, 7 times 2. The perimeter, perimeter, that's when we'll use the slant height. That's still the case where we do 7 plus 3 plus 7 plus 3 more. So 7 times 2 plus 3 times 2 is 14 plus 6. So the perimeter is 20 units, inches, feet, inches, feet, um, whatever the units were were when we were up here. The units are still the same down here. And here the area is units, units squared. All right, so uh, the key to, the big thing to remember, it's not hard to remember the for formulas for parallelograms um, or rectangles, it's base times height. The key is, though, that we need the perpendicular height. We always want to remember that we need the perpendicular height. <clears throat> okay. All right, so that's uh, that's the skinny on rectangles. Not too difficult. Uh, it's more of a, a practice game trying to remember these things. But if you do a few problems, I'm sure that you'll get the gist of it quite quickly. All right, now we're going moving on to triangles. Um, all these formulas are are based off of 
based off of the idea of a rectangle, right? So um, <clears throat> I want to talk to you about triangles. We have different kinds of triangles. We have the equilateral triangle, which means that all the sides are the same. Okay, we have the isosceles triangle. This one right here that you can see, this is an isosceles triangle. Uh, it's got one side that's different, but it's got two sides that are the same, which means it's got two angles that are going to be the same as well. So I have a practice problem with isosceles triangles. Scalene triangles are your triangles that have all different sides. So this yellow triangle that you see here is a scalene triangle. Um, the angles are all different. The, the sides are all different. The angles still do all add up to 180 degrees on the inside of the triangle. That's, that's for all triangles. And then of course we have the right triangle um, which is useful for the Pythagorean theorem, that sort of stuff. So we're going to do a little bit of triangle stuff here. I'm going to show you where the, where the, uh, the formula comes from um, because it's derived, of course, from the rectangle. So, and as you can see, it's one half. It's one half base times height. So let's see if we can deduce why it's one half of the base times the height. Um, so here we are, here we are. We know, just because I just said so not very long ago, that this square, it is a square it looks like, but this square area is equal to base times height. So this is the base and this is the height. And that's gonna give us all the stuff in the middle, right? All the stuff in the middle. Um, it's going to tell us how many boxes we have in here. But you can imagine, you can imagine that uh, since I don't have, I don't have a, a rectangle, I'm, I'm talking about triangles, talking about triangles, so you can imagine if I drew a line right smack through the middle, now I've got one triangle up here and two triangles up here. I've got, I've got two different triangles. So the formula, formula, or area of triangle. Formula of the area of triangle. The conference recording has failed. <clears throat> right, so uh, the area for a rectangle, base times height, if I cut this rectangle right through the middle on the diagonal here, I get a triangle. That's what we were interested in in the first place. So the formula for the area of a triangle must be, as you can see here from our picture, it must be one half of the base times the height. If the base times the height gave us everything in here, we take half of that, that'll give us our triangle. So this is how the formula uh, has been derived. You may also see it as base times height divided by 2. Both of these are the same thing because when I multiply by fractions, when I multiply fractions, it's top to top, bottom to bottom. 1 times b times h is b times h. 2 times 1 is 2. So these two formulas are the same thing. Same thing. 1 half base times height or base times height divided by 2. So let's do some triangle problems. Um, <clears throat> the first one we're going to do is from our uh, our practice test number twenty-seven. I'll zoom in on number twenty-seven here. There it is. What is the perimeter in inches of this isosceles right triangle shown below? So isosceles meaning uh, two sides are the same. So you can see these two sides are the same. This one is different. And then these two angles are also going to be the same because they're, it's, an, it's an isosceles triangle. But the hypotenuse is eight root two inches long. Okay, so let us, let us solve that problem. <clears throat> okay, so let me draw my 
Let me draw my triangle. And we know that this is a 90, at the 90 degrees. And we know that our hypotenuse is the longest side, is uh, 8 root 2. Um, since this thing is isosceles, we know that this is A and this is B for the, for the Pythagorean theorem. <clears throat> Um, but since it's isosceles, since isos, I don't know how to spell that, since it is an isosceles, since isosceles, we know that A is equal to B. We know that A is equal to B. Since isosceles, we know A is equal to B. <clears throat> so really, we have two a squared is equal to 8 root 2 squared. Uh, squaring this, we get 64 and 4. We can do, we can do this in our calculators as well. 8 root 2, there it is, 2 to 2. Going to be 128. So 2a squared is equal to 128. Divide by 2, you get a squared is uh, 64. Square root of both sides, square root of 64 is equal to 8. So the side lengths must be equal to 8. <clears throat> From our answer sheet, Eight. Eight is the side length of our triangle. Because it's isosceles, we knew that they were the same. Because it's a 90 degree triangle, we knew that we could use the Pythagorean theorem. So those were the secrets to solving number 27. Oh my goodness, I, uh, I, I, uh, I, I, we, we, I kind of messed this up. Um, I didn't read the question. What is the perimeter? What is the perimeter in inches of the isosceles triangle? I found the sides. Uh, the sides are definitely eight, <laughs> right? Um, I'm good with that, but uh, I didn't finish the problem. I need the perimeter, so I need eight plus eight plus uh, the 8 root 2. So E, E is our answer. It's 16 plus 8 root 2. Um, because I didn't calculate, I found the side lengths. A, 8 is the side lengths, but uh, it wants me to finish the problem. So let that be a lesson to us. We always need to read the problem thoroughly, through and through. Um, the perimeter is 8 plus 8, which is 16, and then plus of the hypotenuse of 8 root 2. So E, E is our answer. Excuse me there. I have another problem that has to do with triangles. Here, number two. As shown in the figure below, angle ABC is isosceles. 
<clears throat> with lengths AB equal to the lengths of AC. The measure of angle A is 40 degrees and points BC and D are collinear. What is the measure of angle ACD? So here's ACD right here. This is ACD. We're looking for this guy. Uh, and since we know that this is an isosceles triangle, we know that these two angles are the same. Are the same. And we have a triangle. So triangles equal 180 degrees. Triangles equal 180 degrees. 180 degrees minus 40 is 140 degrees. So there's 140 between B and between C. So I'll divide that by 2. That tells me there's 70 degrees. So this right here has 70 degrees. And this right here is 70 degrees. And then this, this other fun fact, the other fun fact that a straight line is 180 degrees. So here, uh, here's a little bit of what we're looking at. I know that this is 70 degrees, and I'm looking for the question mark here. So 180 minus 70 is equal to 110. 110 degrees. 110 degrees is C. So we had an isosceles triangle, which tells me two angles and two sides are the same. I think it's given this angle. I need to divide by two to split these ones up. And then, of course, uh, ACD is supplementary with ACB. So um, I was able to uh, find, find uh, this angle here. If you have any questions about that, please feel free to uh, shoot them at me, inspiredclassroomtim at gmail.com. Uh, just another one for triangles. We have, uh, we have this shape here um, in the figure below. Triangle ABC is a right triangle. Right triangle. So as soon as I hear the word right triangle, I'm thinking Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. The length of AB is 6, so here's my hypotenuse. This is what we call C or hypotenuse. Hypotenuse right there. What is the length in units of AC? So we're looking for this side. So we know that we have 3 squared plus B squared equals 6 squared. Plugging it into the Pythagorean theorem. Solve this a little bit. This is 9 plus b squared is equal to 36. Minus 9 minus 9. b squared then is equal to 27. Okay. And so b is equal to the square root of 27. Uh, now this problem becomes a pre-algebra problem in knowing how to deal with the, the root sign. So because as you can see from our choices over here, we have no root 27s. So we have to simplify this, and you can. Uh, you can write this as square root of 9 times 3. 9 times 3 is equal to 27. Square root of 9 times the square root of 3. Square root of 9 is 3. Root 3. B. B. 3 root 3. So hopefully I didn't do anything too crazy there. Hopefully you guys understand that. Um, if you have questions, please feel free to shoot them at me. Alright, that's enough on triangles, I think. I think we're going to go back to our PowerPoint. And we'll... Oops. Oof. Keep on content. Perfect. Uh, so I derived the formula for area. 
square units, remember that. Equilateral triangles, all sides, all angles are the same. Isosceles triangles, two sides, two angles are the same. Scaling triangles, everything's different. And of course, the right triangle is the Pythagorean theorem. So get comfortable using that. Make sure you, you always, A and B, A and B can be the sides, the adjacent sides of the triangle. They can interchange because you're adding. It's okay. But a C is always the hypotenuse. C is always the longest side of the triangle. Longest side of the triangle. So right triangles, Pythagorean theorem. Trapezoids. Oh my goodness. So let's, uh, there's lots of different kinds of trapezoids. These are the kinds that you'll be dealing with mostly. And we got a couple of trapezoid problems that we'll take a look at. Um, here's the formula for the area, one half, base one plus base two times the height. So base one plus base two is in parentheses, you do that part first, multiply it by 0.5 or one over two, and uh, multiply it by the height. So let me show you first off how it was derived, and second off how it is used. So well, here we are, here we are, here is my trapezoid, here's my trapezoid, and we're wondering how we got the, the formula for area, and I'm going to tell you that now that we have triangles, now that we have a formula for triangles, I'm going to cut this thing into two, two triangles right there, right down that line right there. Notice I have triangle one here. There's a triangle, and here's a second triangle. Uh, so area then, area then would be equal to the area of triangle one plus the area of triangle 2. Right? Perfect. Well, we know the formula for area of a triangle 1 is going to be, we'll label this base 1, so it's going to be base 1 uh, times the perpendicular height, right? The perpendicular height of this thing. So the perpendicular height of this triangle is right here. Right here, this is going to be H. Notice that it's the same height as this one right here, is H. Okay, so the perpendicular height is going to be H, and it's going to be half of that. So that's the area for triangle one, plus B2. So we're going to make this down here, this is going to be base two for our second triangle, times the height times one half from the formula. If you look at this formula, we see that we have an H that's common here, H is common there and there. We have a one half, a one half that's also common on both of them. So I can factor those out. That's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna factor them out and I get uh, one half H and it's, what's left is B1 plus B2. So here we have the, the final formula. Final formula for uh, for a trapezoid. Because we have two triangles, we end up doing adding those two triangles together. They have h in common and they have one half in common. So we can factor those out, and here comes the formula for a trapezoid. So now let's put that to use somewhere.
sorry about that. So here we are. Here we have a, uh, uh, this is a practice problem from a different set of tests that I, that I've been, that I've run across, but it still applies. So in the figure below, AB and CD are parallel. AB and CD, the lengths are given in units. What is the area in square units of trapezoid ABCD? So we know that area, because we just figured it out, is equal to one half base one plus base two times H. Let me give an H. H is right there. I have not been given B2. I've been given B1. B1 is up there at 10. But I have not been given B2 down here. So I got one half. B1 is 10. I need B2. And my H is 4. Uh, but notice. Notice this trapezoid in particular has been cut into uh, right triangles. Two of them to be exact. Um, if this is five and this is five, it's safe to assume, it is safe to assume that this is also four, because it's the height of the trapezoid. Um, and then something you guys should probably know if you haven't heard it already, but um, the Pythagorean theorem has a nice triangle. It's called the three, four, five triangle. Three squared is nine, four squared is 16. 9 plus 16 is 25. The square root of 25 is 5. So a 3, 4, 5 triangle is what we have here with sides 3, 4, and 5. And that, and we know that this is 10 down in the middle. So base 2 must be 10 plus 3 plus 3, which must be, must be 16. So the area then of this thing is going to be 10 plus 16, which is 26 um, times 4 times a half. And you can do that in our calculator. I always, I always type stuff in all my fractions in parentheses. So there's my one half. And I'll just keep using parentheses. There's my 26. And finally my four. Hit enter and sure enough, 52. 52 is the area, the area of my trapezoid. Perfect. Perfect. So that's the, that's a little bit on trapezoids. Uh, they're not too difficult to, to uh, play with, maneuver around with, especially if you understand where the formula comes from. So we started here. I cut it into two triangles. I used area of triangle one plus the area of triangle two, and I got my formula of one half times the height, times the base one plus base two. All right, once again, if you guys have any, any questions, or concerns, or want some feedback, please um, shoot me an email, inspiredclassroomtim at gmail.com. Uh, people on content. So that's, that's a little bit on trapezoids, maybe. There it is. So that's a little bit on trapezoids. Uh, I don't think you necessarily need to remember all the different kinds of trapezoids here. I just found this image, thought it was useful. Um, the mo important thing is knowing what the shape looks like. It's got two parallel lines and then um, other lines connecting them. All of these have parallel lines in them, at least for the bases, right? Um, and then, of course, knowing the, the formula and how it's derived will help. How it's derived will help you remember it. So that's the idea of showing you how it's derived. <sighs> polygons. Polygons could be on the on the uh, ACT. Uh, polygons. When I mean it, poly meaning many, gons meaning side. So 
lots of sides. So here we have a triangle, a quadrilateral, four-sided figure. The pentagon is five-sided. Hexagon is six-sided. The heptagon, seven-sided. Octagon, eight-sided. Nonagon, nine-sided. And of course, the decagon is the ten-sided figure. So uh, I haven't seen very many problems on the ACT practice that I've done that has to deal with polygons, but of course, should be part of your curriculum in school, so it is, oh, it is fair game. Um, a regular polygon means that everything's all the same inside. All the, all the sides are the same, all the angles are the same. Um, they're all equal to each other. Some, so to get the, uh, to get the sum of the interior angles is 180 degrees times n minus 2, where n is the number of interior angles. So let me show you what I'm talking about here in a second. Um, and, uh, 180 and minus 2. Where n is the number of sides, right? The number of sides. So that's the sum of the interior angles. So let's. Uh, Octagon, an octagon, so I have an eight sided figure. So the sum of interior angles is equal to one hundred and eighty times eight minus two. Eight minus two is equal to uh, six. Six. 10,080. 10,080 degrees. All inside there. It's regular. We're going to assume it's regular. So that means they're all the same. So I have one angle, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight angles. 1080 divided by eight, 135. So this angle here is 135 degrees. Divided by the eight angles that I have, 135, 135 degrees for the polygon, for the octagon, right? The octagon, eight-sided figure is an octagon. Uh, we wanted to know the interior, what the interior angles were. They're all the same, so that's why I divided by eight. But I had to use this formula here of 180 times eight minus two. N was eight, because we had an eight-sided figure. 180 times 6 is 1080. Divide that by 8, we have 135 degree angles in our regular octagon. Um, the exterior angles, if you were to extend each side, each side, of our octagon, like so, the exterior angles would be these angles right here. And they're gonna sum, they're gonna sum up to 360. So 360 divided by eight, 45. So all of these angles out here are 45 degree angles. And that works for all polygons. So the key is deciding what do I have, an eight-sided figure, a seven-sided figure, a four-sided figure. That's going to be your N, N in the formula. Um, and that's going to be the big ticket item on, on uh, solving polygon problems. Once again, not hard. Uh, could take some practice, but once you get it, it stays the same. And it's pretty simple stuff. So uh, here we go. Regular means all the angles and all the sides are the same. 
sum of the interior angles is 180, which think about this, if you think about a triangle, right, the triangle, sorry, if you think about the triangle here, 180 degrees is what I told you equals the interior of a triangle, always. Well, if you add 3 minus 2, 3-sided figure for n, minus 2, that's 1, 1 times 180 is the sum of the interior angles, so 180 for all triangles. 360 for, for, uh, for rectangles or quadrilaterals, and of course it goes, goes up from there by another 180 degrees for each, for each side line. Transformations. Transformations aren't too difficult. They're generally done on the coordinate plane, so we have a practice problem from our exam that you that we've been working through um, that actually has you uh, I think reflect reflection it has reflection on it um, but we have these four different ideas of of moving things around so here we have a translation from the blue shape to the red shape it's literally just a shift it's just a shift over a slide it could be up it could be down it could be diagonal it's just the exact same shape just moved over, right? Um, the rotation here, notice the rotation uh, from the blue, blue um, quadrilateral, one, two, three, four, yeah, it's from the blue trapezoid, it's a trapezoid, and it's been spun over, really, it's, you can see how the, uh, you can see how Here's the pointy, the, sh the sharpest edge, right, right here, right there, the sharpest edge, and then it's been spun around, so now that here is the sharpest edge, right, right there, right there, there's the sharpest edge of it. Um, so this thing has just been a spun, spun rotation. A dilation is the same shape, right, just shrunk. It could be bigger, too, a dilation could or an expansion, I suppose, of it. But a dilation is, is the exact same shape. It, it's not being moved anywhere. It's just being shrunk down. And then, of course, we have the reflection. And we're going to work on a problem right now uh, about the reflection. And notice, this is a rotation. Notice here, too, that this is a rotation about a dot, about a point, right? So we've rotated this thing around this point. This reflection has a line over it. We've reflected over a line, over a line. So let's take a look at one of our practice problems. We'll take a look at number 40. When ABCD is reflected over the y-axis, A prime, B prime, C prime, and D prime, what are the coordinates of D prime? So here we have oop, our shape is way up here. I got some graph paper. Let's see if I can if I can model this thing. One. So here's our shape, and I've actually graphed it out correctly, okay? And we want to reflect it, reflect it, reflect it over the y-axis, over the y-axis. Hopefully I've left my notes open in space. I did not, I did not leave myself enough space. Um, so... Sorry about that. So start over here.
All right, there's my shape. There's my shape right there. Here's my point 12, one. And I'm going to reflect it over this Y axis right here. So I simply am going to basically want to fold my paper, fold my paper right along that X, X line. And wherever this guy lands is where I'm going to go. So oddly enough, he's going to land. He's going to land up here uh, on the positive side of the, of the Y, but he's going to land on the negative side of the X. So if I were to fold this, fold this guy like so, you could see, you could see that this guy would land right over here. So uh, one, two, three. Oh, that would be it. The point. Uh, negative 12, 1. That's where that would be. Uh, negative 12, 1. Yeah. And that is a reflection. Uh, think about reflections as simply, simply being like folding a, folding a piece of paper, folding it in half, where would it land, depending on the line that you, that you folded it onto. So uh, negative 12, 1 is where, is where that reflection would happen. Um, all right. Uh, I think, I'm not sure, I'll check here. Um, options. But I think that that is all I had for you guys today. Uh, it was a pretty quick lecture. Um, oh, of course, one more thing, one more thing, three-dimensional shapes. Of course, there's going to be three-dimensional shapes, possibly, quite probably, on the, uh, on the um, ACT exam. So here is some, some basic formulas that you're going to need to know. Uh, here we have a box. The box is just one more dimension stretch of the square or rectangle, right? So before we had the, the area of the rectangle on the bottom was length times width or base here, length times base times height, whatever, length times width. Um, and then of course we're gonna stack those on top of each other, a whole bunch of areas on top of each other, so you gotta multiply by how tall it is. Okay, so that's going to be a three-dimensional box volume. It's gonna, the units are cubed, right? So we have uh, feet, if we're talking about just straight line distance, or meters, or inches. Then we have feet squared, or inches squared, if we're talking about a two-dimensional shape that we could like lay on the floor. And then of course in the, the world that we live in, we talk about volume, which is uh, like inches cubed, or inches, or, or feet cubed. So we're going to have those kinds of, of units at the ends of our problems. Um, so a box or a cube is pretty easy, it's pretty straightforward. It's base times height times width, length times width times base. Um, you just multiply the three dimensions of the three sides together. That's for both a box and a cube. Uh, the volume of a cylinder can be a little bit trickier, um, but it's not really. It, the idea is the exact same as the, as the square. Um, we want to calculate the area of our circle, right? So 2 pi, or pi r squared, right? Pi r squared is the area of a circle, and then we're going to multiply that by our height. So we'll, we'll do a quick practice problem with, with, a, with a cylinder, and um, I will send you on your way. So let's do that right fast. Here we have the... Volume of cylinder. Volume of cylinder. Can you see that? There it is. So here's my cylinder. There's my cylinder right there. And I'm going to, volume of cylinder is equal to I R squared times H. So I'm gonna give myself a I'm gonna say this right here. 
this length is uh, 8, and this height is 10, um, and I need to find the volume. So the volume then, uh, what I gave you here, this length all the way across is 8. Um, is that what I need? I need the radius. So what I gave you is a diameter. Um, this is a diameter. And the radius, radius is equal to half the diameter. Radius is equal to half the diameter. So I gave you a radius, or I gave you a diameter, my bad, but I also gave you a radius. So the volume then is going to be equal to pi, whatever that number is, 3.14159 something, um, R is going to be 4. I'm going to square that, and I'm going to multiply that by our height of 10. 4 squared is 16. Uh, so we have pi times 16 times 10. 16 times 10 is 160. And pi is just going to come along to the right. So the volume then is equal to 160 pi units cubed. Units cubed, right? We need to make sure we remember um, units cubed. We may run into another, another um, sort of problem that is similar to the cylinder and the cone. Quite possible you could run into cone. Um, you see me draw my cone here. There it is. Uh, you can imagine I have to take away this part and take away this part, and I'm left with just one one third basically. So the cone volume is equal to pi r squared times h divided by p, or one third of pi r squared. So there you can see if I minus out the shaded region, I'm left with a cone, and the cone. The cone's volume can be calculated similar to the to the uh, cylinder, but we only want we only want a piece of that, so we only want one third of it. It's going to be less than the cylinder's volume, so that's how we get the volume of a cone. Um, so in this case, it would be pi r. We decided was four squared times ten divided by three. 4 squared is 16, so we have 160 pi over 3. 160 divided by 3 is uh, 53 and a third pi. We go to volume of um, uh, unit cubed. See if that focuses a little bit. Units cubed. All right. Uh, that's all I have today for plain geometry. Um, it's pretty simple stuff. It can be confusing if if you don't practice. Um, but the more practice you put into it, certainly the easier it will get and uh, the more sense it'll make. Every time you, every time you work one of these problems, it'll, it'll come, the, the big picture will come clearer and clearer each time. So um, I suggest uh, that you uh, practice. If you have questions or want help, please feel free to contact me at inspiredclassroomtim at gmail.com. I'm happy to do what I can to answer your questions, and hopefully this has been a good refresher for the ACT uh, plain geometry portion of the math test. Thank you for listening, and have a good day. Good job. Like, exhausted? <laughs>
It's a lot of math for one. Yeah, 